Good afternoon and welcome back everyone. I now kindly call upon Mr. A. Vijay Viknesh, Assistant Professor, to introduce our guest. Very good afternoon everyone. So I extend my warm welcome to the Chief Guest uh, today, Dr. J. S. Sudarshan. Dr. J. S. Sudarshan currently working as a pro Program Director uh, energy and Environment, Nikmar University, Pune. He completed his PhD in uh, Environmental Engineering at uh, SRM University, Chennai. And he did his Master's in Environmental Engineering at Anamalai University, Tamil Nadu. He also completed his Postgraduate Diploma in Industrial Safety at Anna University, Coimbatore. He also worked as an Assistant Professor at SRM University, Chennai for about 12 years. He has published in more than 100 journals under papers in both Scopus and Web of Science journals. He also presented papers in conferences both national and international. He also reviewed papers, many papers in journals such as MDPI, Bioresource uh, Technology, Malaysian Journal of uh, Nursing, etc. Currently in his profile, he has more than 500 citations, H index value of 12 and also I index, I10 index of 15. Recently he has published an Indian patent. Uh, titled Performance of Integrated Constructed Wetlands for Treatment of Wastewater Using Native Wetland Spices. Sir has also received many awards in his name. Uh, he received a Best Teacher Award in the year 2012 and 2013 from SRM University. He also received a National Eminent Research Award 2022 from International Institute of Organized Research. He also received Best Research Mentor Award from American Chemical Society and he also received Senior Safety Professional Award 2022 for his contribution in the field of uh, health, safety and environment. He also co-authored two books uh, titled Concrete Technology and Repair and Rehabilitation of Structures. He also holds many uh, memberships in many uh, professional bodies such as Indian Water Works Association, Institution of Engineering and Technology, UK. Indian Society of uh, Technical Education and uh, Indian Concrete Institute, I ICA. And uh, I once again thank you sir for being here and uh, for accepting our invitation. Thank you sir. Yeah. So good afternoon to all. So it is a great privilege and uh, honor to deliver the talk on the very important and sensitive topic which is uh, trending now in all over the world. That is smart and energy efficient construction materials and technologies for sustainable infrastructure. So in that particular thing I have taken up the topic of my discussion related to sustainable construction techniques and also it is great that uh, uh, Madam has a, made a neat schedule that is because yesterday more with respect to the materials they talked about what are the materials are uh, emerging with respect to the sustainable materials and then Sarah has explained about uh, uh, what is the way that is change needed so what type of change needed how we can take it forward to the next level so that sir has been explained in the morning session and also uh, now I am going to talk about so how all these things can be take it forward to the next level so that is the thing I am going to discuss in my presentation because actually that is a uh, I am an engineering professional but uh, where I am working is a management institute, so uh, my presentation will have some management touch with engineering touch, all these things will be there. So, uh, hope it will be useful for you for uh, taking up further research with respect to the sustainable construction techniques and sustainable materials. So, before going to the presentation, I thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity. So, uh, it is a great thing that uh, these kind of events are organized in many institutions and uh, so the deliberation of this uh, events must be uh, informed to the deciding authority and the governing people must know about the findings of this events so that the policy change can be implemented and the policy change can be adopted at all levels. And another important thing is it is difficult in the afternoon session to uh, catch hold of uh, each and everyone's attention and uh, taking up to the next level. Uh, so anyhow, I try my level best. So how I can keep everybody attentive in listening to the discussion. Fine. Yeah. 
So, from the part of the discussion, what we are going to have today is, so first I will be highlighting about NICMAR, our institute, that is uh, uh, from where I am from. So, I will be highlighting it and uh, then we will be talking about general overview about sustainability and sustainable materials. Then, we are going to take up the case study. That case study we are going to discuss in part 1, part 2 and part 3. So, we have done three types of uh, study in that particular case study. So, we are going to discuss that. And then, outcome of the research, what we achieved from that particular uh, collaborative research and also the research what we have carried out. So, that is the outcome of the research. And then finally, some of the studies, some of the research, what is happening in the present day with other institutions, uh, in support of other friends, so how I am executing the thing that I will be explaining at the last. Fine. So, it is great that uh, uh, in the morning session, sir has pointed out, so the aspect of uh, technology only is not sufficient, it is necessary that uh, uh, you have to estimate, you have to make an estimate and you have to have the capability of managing the situation and managing the things. So, that's, that is the main important thing what we are doing out in NICMAR. So, NICMAR is an institute exclusively for construction management and NICMAR is the only university for built environment. So, here what we are doing is we are taking up the technical people like civil, mechanical and electrical, core technical people and we are connecting them with management and we are making them as a techno manager. So, that is the thing what we are doing in NICMA. So, if you see the uh, three important component what we are addressing in our NICMAR institute, these are all the things and also this is a new department we have started in NICMAR and uh, these are all the two branches we have opened up exclusively for environmental sustainability and energy management. Yeah, then about our institute. So, our institute, so it started postgraduate teaching in construction management since 1984 known for high level of employability to the graduates, 37,000 alumni all over the world and top quality infrastructure, specialist lab and software, executive education, public and private industry partnership. The very important thing I want to highlight is, we won't place our students in software. That is the uniqueness of NICMAR. So, even many of your seniors are uh, studying in NICMAR. So, we won't place the students in software and as a, sir has pointed out in the morning session, 90 percent of the students this year got placed in core companies. All over the India, in abroad also, many core companies they got placed in different levels. So, it depends on the uh, experience and also because another one uniqueness of NICMAR is, NICMAR in the class there will be a candidate, there will be a student with 10 years of experience there will be a pressure also. So, you get an opportunity to interact with the people who are already working in the file field and they who come to the class and uh, that is one of the unique thing you can get in NICMAR. And another important thing uh, where multiple, that is multiple means architect, urban planners, civil engineers, electrical engineers, mechanical engineers will be part of your class. So, as uh, Sarah has pointed out in the morning meet discussion, that is presentation. So, multidisciplinary approach is needed for any kind of research. So, that is one of the important thing which is need of the hour and that we are catering. So, that is the success of NICMA, that is why we are standing in the top. Because many students, they wait for 2-3 years for getting into NICMA into admission and getting into the course of construction management and project management and other courses. Fine. Yeah. So, sustainability and building sector, so buildings are used 40 percent of world's total energy. So, many insight has given by morning uh, resource person. So, uh, I will be touching upon some of the basic aspect and then I will go to the case study. The case study is a thing what we have to look into it uh, very importantly. And 25 percent of wood harvested and 16 percent of clean water is used for different activities in building sector, people spend 90 percent of their time indoors and air quality inside the building is 2 to 5 times worse than outside. So, the very important thing I want to point out here is, if you take the water, if you take the waste water and if you take the outdoor air pollution, 
there are plenty of research finding there are plenty of things are available in the public domain but when you look into the indoor air quality the amount of research with respect to the indoor air quality is very minimum not only in our country around the world and the indoor air quality is a thing which is very very important not only with respect to the improving the health and also it is important for conserving the resources but the awareness level the thing with respect to the indoor air quality is very less because if you see the papers if you search in google uh, indoor air quality related research papers hardly especially from india very very less number of papers you can able to get around the world you will get some papers but in india very less number of papers people who are doing research with respect to indoor air quality is very very less and in that indoor air quality there are many things indoor environmental quality indoor air quality itself people are not looking into it then what about environmental quality how they will be concentrating in that particular thing and third thing is sbs sbs is nothing but sick building syndrome so that is another one important thing which is also uh, uh, need lot of attention and uh, which needs to be uh, taken up very seriously that is another one important thing fine yeah uh last guy can you tell me what you can see from this picture you sit and tell this picture what you can understand from this picture you can tell in tamil also no problem because this is a this is a thing i have to do otherwise after 10 15 minutes i can send some i can receive some soaring sound so <laughs> no other option i have to do this yeah no idea that is not the answer because i am asking you to see the picture and tell the answer not asking you to refer your notes or listen to the story and tell the answer see the picture and tell the answer படம் பார்த்து கதை சொல் படத்தை காமிச்சுட்டேன் the natural resources depleting the natural resources not only by means of one particular activity multiple type of activity what we are performing in our day to day activities not in the day to day activities exclusively exclusively with respect to building related activities so that is the thing which was reflected here and not only that we are not only depleting the natural resources and we are discarding it in a improper manner that is waste because waste is not a waste the waste is the name what we are coining and we are giving it and we are telling it as a waste waste is a wealth but we if we declare waste is a waste mean then it is waste if you consider waste as a wealth means then it is a wealth fine so 50% of material resource taken from natural nature or building related activities it is used and over 50% of national waste production comes from the building sector and another important information i want to highlight uh, hardly 10% of construction and demolition less than 10% construction and demolition waste is managed properly all over the india and that too only happening in the metro cities remaining all other tier 2 and tier 3 cities nothing is happening with respect to the cnd waste if you go and take the statistics if you do go and take the data you can understand what is the scenario even the big companies what they will tell our job is identifying the contractor and handing over to the contractor we don't know what the contractor is doing the contractor what he will do he may be dumping it in the low lying area or he may be dumping it in the landfill who knows and what is happening even not only in our house even in the construction site also no segregation is happening we are moving towards automation we are moving towards technology but the material what we are using in the automation and technology is not nature friendly many materials but we are not segregating it we are simply dumping it 
So that is the thing. Fine. <coughs> so the construction industry is important in economy of every nation as it contributes to the process of development. Energy used in building and for building construction represents more than one third of global final energy consumption and contributes to nearly one quarter of greenhouse gas emission worldwide. The very important thing is, as Sir has pointed out in the morning presentation, cement industry is emitting huge amount of carbon emission, not only at one particular stage. Not only at one particular stage, the carbon emission happening in the sector, that is normally we will call in Nikmar as a crypt sector, construction, real estate, infrastructure and project management sector, that is a crypt sector which covers all aspects of construction. In that sector, different stages. First stage is processing and construction phase. Second stage is utility phase. Third stage is demolition phase. In all the phases, we are releasing the emissions. Not in one way, multiple ways. Right? Fine. So, yeah. So, here again, I need some input from you people. That is, what you understand from this particular picture? This particular picture reflects what? Phases of electrical equipments. So, that particular data highlights you about how much amount of energy, how much amount of resource and how much amount of greenhouse gases which is contributed, which is emitted at the utility phase. Which is emitted at the utility phase. What is meant by utility phase, ma? Utility phase means what? There are three phases. One is construction phase, second is utility phase, third is demolition phase. What is meant by utility phase and who is responsible for that? See, the very important thing is, you can study Bernoulli's theorem, you can study many things, but you must have the knowledge and you must have the idea how the Bernoulli's theorem is used for certain application and where it is used for certain purpose. Without knowing that mugging up the Bernoulli's theorem and vomiting in the examination will not fetch any kind of benefit. That is the things are also highlighted in the morning discussion. He told clearly, I will give you the area. You estimate how much electricity consumption, how much water consumption and give me the data. If you show me the data, I will give you employment. That is the need of the hour. And if you tell, I know only uh, material, I don't know about design. If this kind of statement, if you give, then it is very difficult to market yourself in that outside market. The competition is very tough. Yeah, now tell me. What is that utility phase? Who is responsible for utility phase? Consumer. consumer, stakeholders. We are the stakeholders. We are the stakeholders and we are the consumers. We are responsible at the utility phase. How many societies and apartments are doing it seriously, are taking it properly, <laughs> even bungalows are looking into it seriously in the present day context. And you might be thinking that there are different rating framework, everything is there and as I, Sarah has already pointed out, all things are only at the initial, is each and every individual not taking the responsibility, then it is not possible to achieve any kind of outcome. If Prime Minister giving the promise of net zero 2070 means the promise must be achieved with the support of all the stakeholders. If somebody told, academicians told, we are not responsible, we won't contribute. If process industry people told, we are having some retained restrictions, we can't do that, then it is not possible to achieve that particular thing. So, even the policy change also happening in the recent days to make, to make each and every individual for responsible for that particular activities. It happened, already released. Policy change has been released. So, if you are throwing nonsense, you are punishable. You are liable for punishment. You can't blame the municipality or corporation or panchayat. You are punishable. Like that the policy change is 
happening and in near future it will be very serious because otherwise we can't achieve the target of net zero. Fine. So, you can see here these are all the utility stages. Fine. In the utility stage what are all the activities which are contributing this kind of things. I have listed here 1 by third of greenhouse gas emission, 40 percent of global energy consumption, 25 percent of global water consumption. This is with respect to the utility phase. Utility phase na puri da. Daily ni vit la enna pandriya adha utility phase. Okay. So now you tell me how it is happening. In what way the emissions are happening? In what way it is utilized? Give me some example. Madam, I can take some little bit extra time. No, no issues. No? Fine. Ah, fine. Cooking is one activity, fine, it is also contributing some amount of emissions, true, but not that much high, it is also contributing, fine, then, then, when, when we are doing the flushing of toilet, approximately 10 liters of water we are flushing, we are doing, for one flushing we are releasing 10 liters of water, approximately. When 5 members in your family, you just estimate how much amount of water you are using it only for flushing purpose. Right. Then, second, third, another important thing, energy. Huh? Entertainment, very good. So, very simple because that is a thing happening. Even now I am taking, now I am engaging the people, there are some guys who are looking into it. It is happening. So, automatically you are giving strain to your eye and also you are giving strain to your hand without any outcome. But you are enjoying. But what is the impact it is causing? The impact is very serious. Because one person, if you do like this, if you calculate the entire India's population, how much amount of... Because you can see in the net, you can see in the social media, Every email what you are sending, how much amount of carbon emission. Each and every things carbon emission is happening. So, when you calculate that aspect, it is very high. So, that is the thing earlier days, what our system, what our pattern, all the things gone. Now, even in your house also, you are calling your father and mother, I am ready for dinner. You are calling in mobile or you are whatsapping to your father and mother. So, that is it. So, the conversation between the human gone and everything is happening in the form of machine way. In the same way, the people are also working in the firm. But if you work in the firm like this, <laughs> you will be treated as a machine only. Please understand, if you work like this in